So how many of you guys were here last year? Oh, it's about half. All right, good. That means we're doing something right. OK, so we're going to talk about some similar things that we talked about last year, but we're also going to add some things, too. We're going to talk about um, some mental toughness. We're going to talk about um, a, a thing that I'm working on called the Bring It Philosophy. Um, I'm still working on that, but so far I like it a lot. Um, we're going to work on uh, talk about lock in, lock out, what, we're, you know, what to lock into, what to focus on. And I think one of the things that we're going to start with, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a story. When I was um, in, uh, I, was, I was at the end of my freshman year in college, and there was a senior who was starting, and um, by the end of the year, I got the starting spot, right? So when you go into freshman year in college, it's tough to take out a senior. It's just tough, because the, not, not because I was great or anything, but the coach has a really hard time taking out a senior and putting in a freshman, okay? So for the last two or three games, I was actually starting. So that's you know what we ended in May or so. And then in the fall, the first day of fall ball, let's say it's September 15th, whatever it is, they bring in a transfer who's also a sophomore. And on that day, the first day of fall ball, he was a starting goalie. Think about that. You, you, you know, the summer, you're working hard, you're going back, I'm the starter, and out of nowhere, they bring in someone who's a transfer, and now he takes your starting spot, and you had no chance of, of, of holding that spot, okay? So, for the next six months, I worked so hard to get that job back, okay? Every day in practice, I was listening to loud music, okay? Every day, I was winning every sprint. The team actually got mad at me. We were doing some sprints that were, um, you start at one goal, you jog one way, you sprint back. I actually lapped the team. And they were yelling at me as we were passing each other. Okay? I lifted every day. And I was in there every practice. I was in there for another hour. I was the guy that did that. Okay? I treated every practice as if it were a game. Okay? High intensity, really focused, the whole thing. Right? So... When it came to starting, you know, who was going to start in the first game? Chris Box going to be the starter. And I was psyched. Hold on one sec. Is it not working for us? Um, okay. So, so now I'm, I'm starting. So we go and play uh, Nazareth. We actually, that was a pretty good team back then. And we lost. But I played pretty well. We lost 9-7. But I was happy with it. That was actually one of those where I actually made a save with my face. You guys ever do that? Like the guy was so close. I, I can still imagine coming off my face mask, right? Felt good. So then we played Colgate, which at the time was Division II. Right? Got the game ball. Right? We gave out one game ball that was a captain for the week. So we're playing Cortland next game. And my friend says, man, you're playing really great. And I said, I know. I hope I keep it up. And that's very telling now if I could analyze myself back then, if I were working with myself. Okay? So what happened was we went and played Cortland, and I literally couldn't save a beach ball. Okay? Because I knew the leash was so short, right, that I was going to get pulled. And I could feel it as everyone went in. I'm not kidding. One guy scored from the straining line. I'm not kidding. It was, it was bad. And I could feel it getting worse and worse and worse, knowing that this is it. I'm done. Never played again. Never went in again. That was it. I was done. And the, the, the moral of the story and what I can hopefully put on to you, if you get nothing else out of this whole week out of me, is that I was so busy trying to keep my job that I didn't do my job. Does that make sense? Does everyone get that? You guys know what I'm talking about, by the way? Right? So, if we're talking now, okay, so just so you know, I have a master's in sports psychology. I'm a certified consultant uh, for the, something called the Association of Applied Sports Psychology. I work with student athletes and professional athletes. Uh, whether it's lacrosse players, golfers. I work with an uh, internationally ranked fencer. I had to read up on my fencing, by the way. Didn't know anything about that. But 
Okay, sports psychology is, is sports psychology no matter what we apply it to. I like to apply it to goalie psychology. I actually, have, I'm writing a book right now. Hopefully, it will come out in maybe six months or so. Okay, so you guys can look for that. So, what happened when I started to mess up in that Cortland game? Okay, performance equals talent minus interference plus or minus luck. It's from a guy named Rick Jensen who's down, uh, works a lot of professional golfers down in Florida. Performance equals talent minus interference plus or minus luck. What does that mean to you guys? Yeah. Like you could be the best goalie, but if something just happened to you, like in your family, it might it'll affect your how you play and then you might get lucky on the Right. So you you might be a really good goalie, but if you're if something else is affecting you, whether it's off the field or on, which is a great point by the way. Right? There's going to be some sort of interference that's going to take away from your talent. Which is easier to move, to move interference or talent, to, to go up or down? It's easier to move, right? How hard is it to raise or lower talent? Yeah, I mean, you could work every day, I mean, just like this week, right? And how much did your talent actually go up? Hard to say. So that's why it's so important to work hard every day, right? Talent, when we're talking about talent, who can tell me what do you think talent is? Yeah. Natural ability. Okay. Who else? Work. Like how hard you work? Work ethic? Okay. I like that. I saw someone else's hand. What's your talent? Yeah. Skill. Skill. Like what? As a goalie. High shots, ground balls, bouncers, right? But really, it's, it's our technique, how we do one, how we do it, how, where are our hands, right? So all the stuff that we're learning uh, a lot yesterday, right? How we're playing each shot, what our footwork is like. Okay, it's all the skills that we learned. So if we were to map it out a little bit, okay? I don't know if you guys can read that. Hand speed, footwork, angles, communication, playing from behind, clearing ability. All right, that's going to be our talent. And that takes a long time to improve, but it also takes a long time to get rid of, right? I mean, if you're a really good golfer, you're going to be a pretty good golfer for a long time. It sort of stays stable, but you have to inch it up. Now, if we were to talk about interference, what is interference? Relative to you guys, yeah. Distractions. Well, like what? Like uh, family and friends. Distractions, like family and friends. On the field or just in general? In general. Totally. If your grandmother's sick, that's a distraction. That's interference. Yeah. Pressure. Pressure. How is it? How is it interference? Uh, if you have some, someone that you know and you want to play well, but you really might feel like you have to play well. So you're trying to perform, yeah. but pressure. Here's a little side note. You can't show me a box of pressure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. But pressure is all what we perceive it to be, right? So if your girlfriend is on the sideline, you might be psyched, one person, while another one sees it as a reason to get nervous. I want to do well. Interesting, right? So pressure is just, it, it's just purely psychological pressure. There's no actual pressure except for what we make it up to be. Yeah? Score. 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 Schoolwork, absolutely. That's a big one. How about absolutely schoolwork, academics, all that kind of stuff, right? By the way, get good grades. You want to make your life easier? Get good grades, okay? I don't care where they are right now, make them better. Okay, schoolwork, absolutely. How about going to uh, Showtime and having 65 coaches on the sideline? That's pretty nerve-wracking, right? Right? But, so that's interference. So if we want to look at it, anxiety, fear, lack of focus, lack of intensity is one I see a lot. Low confidence. A lot of the guys said the other day that you had a lack of intensity. Sort of you'd get a little tired. Right? And we'll talk about, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. So, well, let's finish it up. Plus or minus luck. What could luck be? Yeah. 
What do you mean? I don't know, like, uh, there's somebody on the crease, and you, like, you can, like, like, rip a shot, and you put your stick out, and you save the shot. And you oh, sure. You, oh, you could get lucky. Yeah. Oh, I, that, right, that would be plus luck. Absolutely, yeah. A deflection. Yeah, that's what normally what we think is, you know, bad luck, right? Good luck is that, I never even thought about good luck. Yeah. Shot hits the pipe, is that lucky? In a way, it could be. What else, yeah? A bad bounce. A bad bounce. You know, in the summer, who has a grass field as their home field? The home field, really? Wow. That's old school, I love that. That's great. You gotta get to that bounce, because that, absolutely, it hits a rock and goes the other way, that is unlucky. When we talk about bad luck, and, and when we look at it in this scenario, how does luck relate to the rest of the formula? Let's say bad luck. Yeah? It's definitely one of the un uncontrollable things. That's, that's a great point. Yes? How? It can affect interference by changing your confidence. It can, ch it can change a lot of things. The key is how we react to bad luck. Does that make sense? Right, so you've got to recognize what's unlucky. If a golfer hits a ball 300 yards right down the middle, he crushes it and hits a, hits a, um, you know, hits, hits a water spout and takes off. Is that unlucky? You've got to regroup, right? So we want to lower our interference. And I think some of the things that I had written down were, what does that say? Bad bounce, someone had said that. I was thinking of slipping like in, the, in a muddy crease, you know what I mean, where you go to move and you just slip out, you know, that kind of thing. That's unlucky. Poor conditions and weather, like rain, you can't control, you can't control rain, right? But it's how you react. That's the key. You guys know Jack Nicklaus? Ever hear Jack Nicklaus? Right, probably the best golfer ever, other than maybe Tiger Woods, it's sort of a toss-up. Okay, Jack Nicklaus used to go to the British Open. This is in his book, you can read his book. And he would, he would have, they have a party the night before, you know, the Wednesday before the Thursday first round. And people would say, you know, at the party, boy, it's really blowing hard out there, that wind's tough. Beating him. Oh, you see the greens are so fast, I never played greens so fast. He's out and he would just check off guy after guy that would complain about the weather. Because the weather always in, in, in the open, in the British Open, is always really tough. Okay, so he would just recognize that. Yeah, we all deal with that stuff. The uncontrollables control the controllables. Control the things that you can control. Preparedness, effort, right? Your thoughts, your actions. We can control those things. Sometimes emotions get in the way, right? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So interference, you can see how interference is really difficult when playing goalie. And I mean, we just put together what, six or seven things that, are, that include interference? And one thing to think about too, if you want to think about it, in, in, that, in that formula, let's say your talent is, let's take Coach Gittleman, right? Playing in the MLL. Scale of one to 10, what's his talent? No doubt, right? 12. 12. Okay? So it's a 10. So if he plays perfectly as far as he's completely focused on the release, he's not having any issues at home, he knows exactly what he's doing when he's out there, it seems like a beach ball to him, and he can just stop everything. Everything's in slow motion. His interference would be roughly what? Zero. So his performance is a 10 minus zero. Luck is sort of an extra part, right? So he, he played at a 10. Now, in another scenario, the next game, next week, breaks up with his girlfriend, he's, you know, he's, not, he's worried about keeping his job, he's got all these issues going on. Talent is still what? It's a 10, right? What's his interference? Who knows, six, eight, 10? Let's say it's nine. Let's say something really bothering. Take my game against Cortland. Right? So 10 minus 9, your performance is a 1. 
So do you see how important it is to control the best you can the interference that we deal with? Does that make sense? And it's one thing that most people don't do. Sports are 100% physical and 100% mental. And I can't believe more people aren't talking about the, the psychological side of playing goalie. Okay? You've got to focus on that kind of stuff. And we'll have questions afterwards. Yes, question. Go ahead. Great question. Some of the things, like if we were working together, right, one of the things that I would say is there's, here's the thing that you guys can use, okay? It's called a dump card. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to write down on an index card all the things that are bothering you, okay? And, you're, you know, whether, whatever it happens to be, it's going to be schoolwork, recruiting, the pressure, whatever it happens to be, all that stuff, you're going to write it all down. And you're going to promise yourself after the game Sometime that night, you are going to sit and stress about it for as, as hard as you can for a half hour. Those things on that list, right? I promise I'm going to stress about these things that are bothering me, just not now. And leave it in your locker. Don't bring it with you to the game, your car, whatever it happens to be. Okay? That's for later. So, okay, fine. For the next two and a half hours, I'm focused on the cross. I have my whole list of things to worry about. Does that make sense? Right? So that's, that's one thing that you could do. Another thing that you could do is something that I say cross the lines. Okay? Once you cross the line onto the field, imagine a wall that comes up around the sidelines. So there's no fans, there's no coaches, there's no f girlfriends, parents, whatever it happens to be. Right? In-laws for some of the older guys. Okay? And just imagine that there's a wall that goes up around the field. And that's what you're focused on, okay? Then it comes down to finding the release, locking into what, to what's important, okay? Does that answer your question? Okay, it's not easy, by the way. I will give you that. So anxiety, I'll say, you guys from, from last year, what is anxiety? Ah, oh, nothing? Yeah. Being nervous, Being nervous right, nerves. Right? What's another way to say that? Was it? Fear. fear. Well, not fear, actually. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Stress. Worry. Right? Those, are, those symptoms are long. They, they happen after a long period of time. So anxiety is stress or worry or focus on an event in the future. Right? Anyone nervous when they ask the you know, uh, girl out to prom? For like the week beforehand? Yeah, I mean, I was. Right? That, that will make you nervous. That will make you anxious. And that will sort of weigh on you. You can't sleep very well. But that is something in the future. All right, going to school and getting recruited. That's something that you might get nervous about. Okay, that's anxiety. That is something in the future. Now, you said fear. What's fear? Being scared of something. You're right. Yeah. Scared of failure. That might be a little bit anxiety. Like your mind's response to danger. Your mind's response to danger. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the key part is the response to danger. Is it dangerous to not get recruited? No, right? But... It, you're, you're right. Fear is an immediate response to danger. Do you guys see the difference? Right? So if you're, we're not worried about whether or not we get recruited, but if there's someone who is reaching back on man up, top right, and you know that guy's a righty, right? And he reaches back, that's danger. Okay? Does that make sense? That is immediate. It's coming. What's dangerous about it? Why is there fear? You know the kid has a really good shot. Absolutely. But what's going to happen? Yeah. He could, score. he could score. True, but not necessarily fear. Yeah. You could get hurt. You, could get hurt. you know why? Because it hurts. <laughs> right? I, I said this last year. Someone has to tell Scott Rogers that, though, because he doesn't seem to care about that. But yeah, 
it, there's fear involved. It hurts, right? So while we don't want to score, and you know, that's part of it, I think that's a little bit of anxiety too, but there, I think the brain goes into a primal mode where it just doesn't, you don't want to get hit. Make sense? Yeah? Okay. So, fear actually will totally debilitate your ability to play goalie. Okay? Not enough people talk about. So fear, once the core of the brain is activated, uh, coach, I'll take that. Once the core of the brain is activated, thank you, it goes into a protective mode. Okay? Core of the brain says, this is going to hurt. Get out of the way. Right? So now what happens? Our hands will come in and will drop. So remember my, my, the first day when we were talking about being on your toes? This happens all the time, where you get on your toes and you want to shrink down. That's why we're trying to get more on our heels a little bit, stand upright, okay? Try to overcome that. But recognize that fear happens, okay? It, it, it's going to be there at certain times. How do we overcome it? We'll talk about it in a second. But let's recognize the symptoms first, okay? So what happens is you're in a good position, and this is why you guys, I kept saying today, hands out, hands out, hands out. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Because if your hands are out, this is your speed. And what, what can happen is if you feel fear and you start here, you'll get here. So Coach Gittleman was doing that um, drill with the defensive stick, right? And so what I like about that is it forces you to keep your butt end here and to punch your bottom hand. Coach Galloway was awesome at that when he was punching his bottom hand. There's no fear in that motion. But this is one of the things that I see so many goalies do and they don't really dissect what the issue is. I have a goalie out in Colorado, he's a great kid. And you know, we looked at some film and I, you know, I said, you know what, the answer to your problem is not what you wanna hear because it's gonna take a while to fix. And it was fear, because his first move was this, okay? And that's just a fear response. The brain says, get out of the way, right? So we worked on some things to help that. One of the things, by the way, that you can do, who's got sweet tilt on their helmet? Everybody, right? If you can, this will help you. So you look out of the top bar, right? Look out of the middle bar, right? Just try looking out of the middle bar, just to get in practice. Okay, you get used to keeping your chin up. Does that make sense? Right, so just, just get used to it. You don't have to do that you know, in a game or whatever, but just try to do that so you can see where the release point is. Make sense? Okay. So, fear can cause you to do things that you don't necessarily want to do, and now it's going to make you, you know, almost impossible. It's going to make it almost impossible for you to make a save because if you're doing this, you're no longer seeing the release point. Tennis ball drill, the way we were doing with the rackets, right? That was all about seeing the contact point, I mean the release point, and then the contact point, all the way. If you're doing this, you can't do it. Here's the other thing that I see all the time, and it's misdiagnosed as bad form. It's not necessarily bad form. It's fear taking over. This is why it's so important to make sure that you're focused on the right things. If you bring your hands in, so often, if you do feel some fear, what's going to happen is you're going to bring your bottom hand, whether you're right or your lefty, your bottom hand to your hip. Because the brain wants to recoil and, and say, whoa, this isn't going to be good, right? You bring your, your bottom hand to your hip, and now you've got to turn this way. Because there's no way you're making this safe. You guys all know what I'm talking about? Right? Some guy's lining up, and it's like, oh. Because your first move was to bring your hands in. The body wants to recoil and protect. Last year we talked about if I point a gun at you, what's your first move? Recoil, right? Hey. Right? If I point a gun at your mom, what's your first move? Forward, right? Aggressive. Same action. Right? But it's reframed in a different way. So, if your hands are out and you can keep them out and you can keep your chin up and you can decide, I'm, I'm going to find the release, I'm staying on the release, and keep those hands out, you'll at least give yourself a chance to not bring those hands in and then get caught in here. And see how thin my body gets, right? I never want to turn my hips like that. But my first move is that 
and then bring my hands in. That's fear. That's not bad technique because we could do it over and over and over with tennis balls and it won't happen. And you got one guy who's ripping on you and all of a sudden you're doing this. It's not technique. Does that make sense, everybody? You guys know exactly what I'm talking about? Right? Okay. So what? What does all that mean? Now what? What do you guys do? All right, we all know that this happens. Who actually does something about it? I'll tell you this. I was working with a goalie this year, and he did something pretty amazing. And I think you guys can all learn from this. We went and played a team that was really good. I think nationally, I don't know, eighth in the country. I mean, they were, they were good. And they had six shooters, I mean, six shooters on the field at all times. And the, he let up nine goals in the first half. And he came walking off at halftime. I'm like, your hands are stuck to your chest. He's like, I can't believe they're stuck to my chest. He, was, he knew exactly what I was talking about. And he's like, they're right here. And he was so frustrated. And the second half, he let in two goals and had like 14 saves. Because he overcame it. He said, you know what, I'm not going to do it because this doesn't work. Okay? He got his hands out. 12, 14 saves, something like that. Okay, that was amazing that in the middle of a game, he switched it. Make sense? Now, what he didn't have was the bring it mindset. Okay? So this is what I've been working on lately. When you step on the field in warm-up, Start to develop this bring it mindset. That no matter what happens, you want them to bring it. Okay? This goes back to the reframe versus, you know, you getting shot versus stopping someone shooting your mom, right? Bring it. Bring it. And I'll tell you, I've been doing this myself, and it works. I might not make every save, but it gives me a much better mindset. Okay? So as they're working it around, bring it. Come on. Bring it. Bring it. See, I'm just edging out already. What I see so often, Google uh, or YouTube um, uh, best high school goals. And you'll see the goalie so often will be here, you know, coming in, you know, one of those, right? And then if you look, Google best saves, you'll see those guys. Like uh, Coach Galloway had a, had a highlight that uh, you can see on his college one. I don't know if I have time to it. Where he just stands there and just doink. He, he like, doesn't, doesn't move at all. Okay, Coach Turner, when he's playing his best, he, you lefty coach? Right. When he's playing his best, he's tall, right, and doesn't move at all and just waits for that release. How much interference is there in that? Right? It's minimal. So now you're focused on what? The release. The ball. I'll give you a this is half right. Okay? So that's simple. So how many times, who, everyone, everyone to imagine the best they've ever played, the best game they ever had or half or whatever it is. What were you thinking about when that happened? Whoa, whoa, what? Saving the ball. Saving the ball. Stopping the ball, I would say. What? How bad, the other team was. How bad the other team was. That was your best day was when the other team was bad? <laughs> <laughs> That's not right, yeah. And what, were, what were you focused on, though, when you were actually just stopping the ball? But you were, stopping, you were focused on stopping the ball, right? And that's it, yeah. On winning, focused on winning. Okay, so... It'd be fun to win. Yeah, all right, all right. So, but I would guess, in all those scenarios... That you, let me guess, that when you made your best save ever, you were thinking of nothing. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Well, that's almost impossible if you're awake to think of nothing. You were thinking about very few things. See the difference? It's very simple. So if you want to play your best, focus on very few things. This bring it mindset, okay, the bring it mindset puts you in that ability to be aggressive and focus on very few things. Because you're just thinking about bring it. Like, I want it. Shoot it. Let's go. 
And if they score, so what? You just you gave it your best chance anyway. Because I hope they don't score, I hope they don't shoot, I hope they don't shoot, I hope they don't shoot. That's not gonna work. Right? Anyone been tied game in, in like overtime? And you, everybody, right? And you're like, oh, don't <laughs> just get it to the other end, right? I don't want it. I don't want it here. Right? You actually want to turn it around the other way. Bring it. I want it. We had a goalie uh, in, in, uh, when I was coaching high school. We had a goalie that if they were 12 to 15 out, we wanted them to shoot on him because it was an automatic turnover. And we went through four overtimes and he had eight saves. It's like, that's insane. But he stayed focused on the release every time. Okay? Stay focused on the release with a bring it mindset. Okay? And you can start that tomorrow, but you got to do it. You can't go back to your old ways. You have to implement this. Okay? All right. So, when we talk about that, one shot at a time. You've got to focus at one shot at a time. There was a goalie today, and I don't even know who it was, and you don't have to say it was. But we, uh, Coach Turner and I were hitting tennis balls at him, and we scored like three or four in a row. And it was frustrating. And I kept saying, next one, next one, next one. Because the last one is irrelevant. It will never, ever matter as far as the next shot. If it goes in, you miss it, it's irrelevant. You make the save. It does not matter. Okay? The next shot is always more important. Does that make sense? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you do? The next shot is always more important than the last one. Always. So, we talked about this a little last year, but I'll go over it again. You let in a goal, right? What do you, what, what, what's a normal reaction? Get the, ball out. Get the ball out. By the way, first rule, first rule of, of playing goalie, make sure you put your hand in the net. Oh, yeah. There's nothing worse than getting scored on and getting your helmet caught in the net, right? <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? Do not let that happen. I'm telling you, your coach will get mad at you if you let that happen. Okay? Okay. Second thing you do, you pick up the ball or let a defenseman. I, I used to do that. Let a defenseman pick up the ball. Give it to the ref. Talk to your defense or whatever it is. But once that little scenario is over, okay, so you let in a goal. You pick it up. You throw it to the ref. Hey, what happened there? We got a slider earlier on him. He's a really good shot, whatever it is. Turn back to the goal. Release that last shot. Let it go. Give yourself 10 seconds to get mad, right? You can get mad, right? It's all right. Emotions are pretty hard to control, but ultimately they'll fade. So turn back to the goal. All right, I'm back. Okay? Make sense? So it's release the last one and then refocus on the next one. The next shot is always, always, always more important than the last one. I don't care if you made the save or not. So like I said before, say I need to make the first save to get into a game. How many people feel that way? Come on, right? Right? We all, ah, oh, we got to get rid of that, okay? It's irrelevant. Make the first save in, in warm-ups. Make the first save in, in, in you know, the pregame six on six. You're just stopping a ball. That's it. I say this all the time to my guys that I've worked with for a long time. I want goalie robots. I want to put them in the cage, and they're always the same. Find the release, find the contact point, make the stop. Make sense? Okay. So, how do we do that? Okay. There's this philosophy on focus called lock in, lock out. Okay. And so I can be, we can all be thinking and looking at certain things and concentrating on certain things. So I can, I can concentrate on the straw in his mouth and the camera over there and the coaches over there and all the seats that are open in the back, all these things, right? But I can only do it one thing at a time. I can't take it all in. It's not how the brain works, okay? So when we lock in to what we want to see, the stimuli, which in this case would be the release point, we lock out all the negatives. Anything that would be what? Starts with an I. Ends with an interference. <laughs> right. Okay? So by locking in to release points, we lock out interference. 
Make sense? This is why it's so important, guys. You want to be the best goalie in the country? You want to be one of the best goalies in the world? Like we have, by the way. They're here. This is what they do. OK? Now, if you've seen this before, please don't say anything. Yeah? OK. Let's see. Everyone got it? How many passes does a team of white make? What is it? Who thinks it's 12? One. Two. Who thinks it's 13? Who thinks it's 14? Who thinks it's 27? No? OK. Anyone see the Milwaukee Bear? It's going to come right here. There he is. Look at the moonwalk. I like the moonwalk thing. Oh. That was trippy. Okay. So, what happened? What did we learn from that? Focus on the white. Not focus on the Easy, easy. We're focused on the passes, right? And what even particularly were you actually, if you think about it, what were you actually focusing on? The ball. How many people didn't see the bear? You all just learned how to play goalie the right way. Focus on the release point, and you will lock out all the things that you don't want to worry about. Now, that's not easy. There can be a guy wide open right here, whatever it is. But if there's a guy doing an alley dodge, you focus in on that ball. Right? If Ned Crotty, you said this last year, if Ned Crotty's coming around this way, you've got to find that ball. It's tough because he's close. I get it. But it doesn't, mean, it doesn't make it wrong. OK? Here's another quick side note. Responsibility. Every goal that goes in is your responsibility. I don't even care if you're, off the, if you're off, out of the cage. It is your job to stop the ball. If it's a six on O, it is your job to stop the ball. How many times have we done this? You throw an outlet pass. The fenceman drops it. Attackman comes down. It's just you and him. And you're like, oh, man. You just you, you didn't, like, didn't even give it a chance. You guys know what I'm talking about? You just know, like, you just sort of let it in. It's your job to stop the ball every time. OK? Now, if we take responsibility, Right? If it's our responsibility and we take responsibility, then we can change responsibility into two words. Responsibility. The ability to respond how we want to. OK? Because if it's always the defense's fault, why would you change? Because every time you go like this, well, it's the defense's fault. They didn't slide. You know, I told them to slide. They didn't slide. It's their fault. So why would you ever change? How about teaching the defense to learn to slide earlier and making, making, the right, you know, making the right changes that you know you have to do? Does that make sense? OK, side note over. OK, what do you guys think of that, of the lock in, lock out? Well, I'll get to that. Lock in, lock out. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Easy or hard to do? I heard easy. Who thinks it's hard? Coaches, easy or hard? To lock in to the appropriate cues. I think it's really hard. OK? It's very, very difficult. Don't kid yourself. OK? How are we doing on time, coach? Am I OK to do a little bit more? OK. Mental toughness. What do we know about mental toughness? Yeah. 
Being able to persevere through difficult situations. I like that. You guys t generally agree? OK. So I created this film when I was down at the IMG Academies in the mental conditioning department, which is this huge, it's like a college campus for, for athletes. OK? And we talk a lot about mental toughness. And it doesn't matter the sport. We're going to apply it to being a goalie. OK? But we're going to watch this. And we're going to break it down. Oops. Did I did I go uh, did I mess that up? Yeah. All right, who's that? Roger Federer, right? I think the best player ever, ever to play. He's un unbelievable, right? Do you know that he was a, what do you, what do you, if you were to use a word to describe Federer, what, what would it be, the way he plays? Amazing. <laughs> okay. He is amazing. Athletic. Athletic. Poised. Poised. Smooth, right? Nadal's the guy that jumps around, right? He's really intense. But Federer is the guy who's smooth, never gets rattled, right? He's poised. He has composure. Controlled. Controlled. You know that he was a racket thrower when he grew up? Until he was about 14 or 15? Yeah, he would throw tantrums. And his parents would take him off, take him off, the, off, the, off the court because they didn't want to see it. Which is so funny to think that Roger Federer, Mr. Ice, is the guy that would throw tantrums. Okay? But what he says here, he says, you know, when I was 13 years old as a ball boy in Basel, I dreamed of being number one in the world. And now here I am 10 years later, and I'm, not, I'm living my dream. That's an amazing thing to me, right? That he dreamed of being number one in the world. And, you know, what did we do yesterday, right? We were at camp. We were here in Connecticut. He was being number one in the world. Like, someone's got to do it. Someone's got to play in the MLL, right? So if you work hard, and that's what your dream is. So let's see, you're going to be 23, right? So there, we have 12 year olds here. You have 10 years. Why not? Someone's got to do it. And you've met guys that have done it. How about that? OK, so have a dream and commit to it. Which I think, you know, the fact that you guys are here is a pretty good start. Who's that? Phil Mickelson, right? Number two in the world, maybe number one in the world at one point. OK, so what's he talking about there? Focus on the process. Yeah? Right, so he said stepping to the ball and making sure that you're making the save. Remember, I always say stops, right? So you're making the stop. Right? So the focus is on finding the release. Right? If the process is to make save after save after save, you do that, you win whatever it is to zero Right? if you make every save. But we don't focus on winning. Focusing on winning is a result. We focus on process. Okay? You want to be successful in business? Don't focus on winning. Focus on process. You want to get good grades? Go get a 4.0. How do you do that? Study. Study, Study for what? Which one? The next one. And then after that, you study, on the, study for the next one. And the one after that, you study for that. 
That's how you get a 4.0. You don't just walk in and say, oh, I got a 4.0. You got a lot of studying to do. You got a lot of tests to take, a lot of quizzes, a lot of papers. Okay? Focus on the process, not the result. Don't focus on winning state championships. Focus on release points. Who's that? Andre Agassi, right? He's Pete Sampras. He was number one in the world. He went to 147. Okay? Because he just he hated tennis, to tell you the truth. But when he, he found his passion, his passion was when he, when he was 147th in the world, he didn't make any money. And he had started a foundation in Las Vegas for, for kids, inner school kids and education, right? And he realized, at 147, I can't do anything. So he wanted to get back to number one so he could fund that foundation. That's a passion. Every morning you wake up with that passion. I want to do this. I want to be the best so that I can help others, which would be a great passion, right? Okay? So what he did is I wrote, I had to write down something every day and get better every day. And he went from 147 back to number one in the world. Do you have any idea how hard that is to do? I mean, it's so hard. But he had a new passion. Okay, and he would write down, every day he would write down something new. This is what I got to do today, because today I have to accomplish something. Okay, sort of what we're doing today. Practice is a perfect example. Don't, uh, Coach Galloway, I think, was talking about warming up, uh, warm ups, right? You've got to work in your warm ups. You've got to get better that day. Stay after, start early. One of the goalies that I worked with, you know, we talked about the favorite moments in, in uh, lacrosse that you guys have been talking about outside. My favorite moment was a little longer than a moment, but it was an hour working with one of my goalies who works so hard all the time in the absolute pouring rain. And if he was going to stay out there, I was going to stay out there. That was my favorite day of lacrosse because he wanted to get better. And I wasn't going to stop him. I was going to help him get better. Does that make sense? Every day counts, especially when we're talking about dreams. Oh, I did it again. I can't believe it. And now it's not working. All right, we'll get there. Right, this one's quick. We all know what that is, right? So he's talking about no limits, having no limits. He knows no boundaries. The man changed a sport. Think about that. That's amazing. And he's a human, just like you guys, right? So who's going to change goalieing? Nobody? Not yet. There's one. Or is that a yawn? Right? So who's going to change the whole thing, right? Scott Rogers is a good example. He changed it because he's so big, right? And he did, his offside high save, I don't know if you ever watched, but he would just move his shoulder, right? It's crazy. He changed it, right? So, you know, have no limits. I, I talked to one of my kids. I, I help kids with, with grades and improving their grades. I, I take sports psychology and apply it to academics. And I said, you know, are you an A student? And he said, you know what? I was just telling my parents about that. I'm a B student. I said, really? I go, no, you're not. You're an A student that puts in B effort. But he thought, I'm just a B student, so I'm just going to get Bs. Right? So if you're the freshman goalie or the JV goalie or you're the backup goalie and you think, yep, that's my spot, that's going to be your spot. If you have no limitations, now you have room to grow. Make sense? I want to see who's going to be the next one to change goalieing.
What's he talking about there? Perseverance, right? He, having adversity and learning from it. It's really taking the emotion out of things that happen to you. All right? If you have a bad game, why? Don't just get mad about it. Okay? If you have a tough time, one of my guys, he was an amazing kid. And we, I think I talked about this last year, but he was the backup goalie. And he was the, the cheerleader of the entire team. Right? And he learned, you know what? That's who I am. Right? Yeah, it's tough. I want to be the starter, but I'm not. And he knows going forward, that's who he is. There's a lot of value in that. Okay? So if you have a tough game, if you have a tough loss, learn from it and get better. It's not a negative. It's just the way it is. They're just facts. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Okay. I won't make the mistake. It follows rugby. New Zealand All Blacks. This is a tribal ritual they do before every game. Watch France. They're totally scared. They don't want any part of this. Okay, who does that before games? Anyone do that before games? Okay, last year we watched, and you can Google, Google um, uh, uh, Galloway Syracuse highlights, okay? And he does this whole thing where he takes, and I think the whole team used to do it, where they take mud and they put it on the face, okay? That's sort of the same thing. That's called a trigger. If you want to get fired up, you need to do something that's going to get you fired up and intense. The, to me, the more intense I was, the better I played. The more of that bring it mindset I could, I could bring into how I'm playing. Okay? But you need to do something. You can't just hope it works out. Listen to music. Who listens to a particular song or set of songs, a playlist? That's awesome. Keep doing that stuff. All right? Whatever it happens to be, or you do something right, you know, as... The, everyone's starting to line up. You go shake the hands with the other goalie and you run back to the goal. You, know, have that, you have that second to yourself. Anyone do something there? Yeah. What do you do? I like tap the pipes. Tap the pipes? Like I don't suggest doing this, but I used to do it. I used to headbutt the pipe. <laughs> I don't know why. It just got me fired up. Okay? Get psyched up before you play. It makes a difference. Freddie Adu is a soccer phenom. Okay, so Freddie Dew, what he's saying is how you approach practice is how you should approach games and vice versa, okay? Who plays at a scale of 1 to 10? Who plays at a 10 and of intensity during games? Right? Who does it in practice? It's tough, right? So if you practice at a 6 for five days in a row and then you're planning on playing at a 10 on game day, that's not how the brain works. Nine, 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 nine and a half, nine and a half, ten. You want to do it every day. So you are, a you are a goalie robot. You're always that way, every day. Make sense? Think about how you can do that on a daily basis. Best golf shot ever hit. Okay. 
70th hole of the Masters. Tiger is tied with Chris DeMarco. This shot is impossible. Look how many people. By the way, play to win. Don't play to not lose. Play to win. You want the ball. Bring it. Look at, what, what's that? 15,000 people just on that shot. Here's the flag over here. Look at his eyes. Is he locked in? Does he see all those people? Is he worried about where he is in, in the tournament or the result? He's focused on this shot and this shot only. That's what you need to hit the best shot ever. Now listen to Herm Edwards right here. I love that last line. Other people might quit on you, but don't you quit on yourself. I love that. Herm Edwards always gives me goosebumps. Okay? So... By the way, and, 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 and just in that expression, don't ever quit on yourself. Okay, you might have a bad day, but it's just a bad day. Other people might quit on you. You know what? Some, sometime in life, they probably will. But don't quit on yourself. It's huge about being mental, mentally tough. You want to be the best goalie possible? You can't have bad days and give up. You just won't be the best. Right? You certainly won't even be the best you. Okay, so have your bad days, learn from it, and get better. Okay, questions. That's a lot of stuff we talked about. Anxiety, fear, lock in, lock out, bring it mindset, interference. Yes? Yeah, it's something I do with golfers, actually. That's a good question, because it happens. Um, with, with uh, well, gol golfers or goalies, go to the side, get some water, and take your helmet off, okay? Take a second, and actually take your helmet off, and, and your gloves, okay? And relax for a second, and sort of realize that it's sort of, it's over, right? You want to stay in the present. Right there, you're not getting scored on. And then, when you're putting your helmet back on, think as though things are anew, that you can start again. Okay, it's very hard to do that. The other thing that you could do is try to think about what's going wrong. You know, the, the guy that I worked with uh, this past spring who his hands were too tight, he knew right as he was coming out, he knew. So he worked really hard on the, the second half, just pushing him out. So that, that was the thing that helped him. Okay, he analyzed what was wrong and then fixed it. So the, I would say if you could do those, you know, one thing is sort of... Um, it's a way to, to, to pop the, the, the pressure balloon. And then the other one is, is uh, more of an analytical, well thought out way to get out of your, what's called a downward spiral. You know, if you let in, you know, one goal, two goal, three goals, it's sort of, the, you know, the same thing, right? We all know that feeling. Just stay focused on the next shot. The next shot is more important. Anyone else? No questions at all? Coaches? We're good.